Good morning. From health care to immigration and tax reform, there are important and divisive debates happening in our nation's capital. But will those debates lead to actual progress? Joining us this morning to discuss, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Good to see you here. Good, Good to, to see you see in you Washington. Too. Thank you. Uh, are things as bad as they seem? And I hate to put it that way, but when we watch the news and, you know, are on the news, things seem so hyper-partisan that I wonder, can anything actually get done? Is it that bad when it, you're there? It, it is in the sense that on these big issues like immigration, tax reform, health care, um, it is extremely partisan. And, you know, the Democrats have not been invited in to most of the conversations around any of these issues. That said, I think, you know, for many of us, we are trying to find these openings. We know that there are issues where both sides agree. DACA is one. Immigration reform in general is one. And I help lead a caucus of six new members on the Democratic side and six new members on the Republican side with Roger Marshall from Kansas. We just wrote a bipartisan op-ed about the need for immigration reform and how we need to move forward. And the fact that the rhetoric that's out there right now is not helpful to us actually getting things done and solving problems for the people of the United States. You say uh, Democrats aren't being invited into those conversations. Are Democrats being realistic in the fact that they're not going to get everything they want? Are you guys being open to negotiations or are you putting your foot down and that's why they're not inviting I you? Yeah. I think um, it's a bit of a you know vicious cycle, but no, we're not being invited in at all. So it isn't about you know what's the compromise. I mean, it, you know, one way to think about it is on health care. They wanted to cut 23 million people off of health care. We didn't want to cut anybody off. Do you compromise at 13? No. There are certain principles that we're going to stick to. But I think the reality is that, you know, we've been ready to work on DACA, on immigration reform. And in fact, on DACA, the president said, you know, agreed with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer that we should bring forward the DREAM Act. Now they've come out with a set of immigration principles that are absolute non-starters, not, not possible for us to even negotiate on that. I, I want to get more into DACA because as an immigrant yourself, I know that immigrants is an issue that you're passionate about. Um, you know, this is really in the hands of you guys to get something done. There yeah. is a deadline here. The clock is ticking on DACA. Considering that we haven't seen an ability to really get anything of substance done in Washington, D.C., do you really actually have faith that you guys are going to be able to come together on a solution for these so-called dreamers by the time that deadline hits? Well, I'll tell you one thing. What I hear from my Republican colleagues is they want to get this done. This is a problem for them. Eighty percent of the American public believes that there should be a solution for dreamers and that it should not be dependent on border security or increased enforcement. The polling is off the charts on this, including for Republican voters um, and, and actually even Trump voters. So uh, this is an issue that we were starting to make some progress on. I think everybody had thought that we would be bringing forward some sort of a DREAM Act. There would have to be some sort of, you know, discussion about what that included. But people understand that, you know, these young people are in a different category. And what's happened now is with the White House principles on immigration, that has now expanded it much beyond the dreamers. And that's where everything starts to break down. So if you start to look at, you know, sanctuary cities and cutting legal migration and all kinds of other things that are in that proposal, it's not going to go anywhere. So we're going to have to take many steps backwards, step away from Stephen Miller and have the president have to weigh in and say, you got to get this done. Well, and you realize as Democrats that in order to save these so you're right. Republicans and Democrats seem to be on a consensus that they came here through no fault of their own. This is the only country that many of them know. But you guys realize that you are going to have to make some concessions to we, Republicans to be able to save those dreams. You have to get you have to get 218 votes in the House. So um, we don't have enough votes as Democrats on our own. There are 30 Republicans on uh, Carlos Corbello's bill, which is we call it Dream Act Light, but um, it's an indication that you know, there are Republicans ready to sign on. I've talked to a number of Republicans who have said, you know, we are this close to signing on to the DREAM Act, which has every single Democrat on it already and is the only bipartisan bicameral bill um, currently around the DREAMers. Yeah, well, you guys are figuring that out. I just can't imagine what it's like to be one of those DREAMers sitting, waiting, wondering it's, what their future looks like. It's really like. tough. Uh, I want to move on to another immigration issue that is has been uh, debated here at home. Our attorney general's office just sued um, the the company that runs our immigration detention center in Tacoma. There's been issues uh, there for a long time. Uh, the lawsuit is over accusations that these immigrants who are being detained there are basically being forced to do labor that should be hired out uh, for chips and for candy. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they're paid like a dollar a day. Yeah. Uh, you introduced a bill with uh, your counterpart, Congressman Adam Smith, to 
unprivatize these immigration facilities across the country to make sure that they're not privately operated? Why? Well, I've been working on this um, for over a decade. I actually did a report when I was at One America on human rights abuses in the detention centers. Two-thirds of our detention centers are now operated by private corporations whose main goal is to make profit. And so um, what we're seeing is a decrease in transparency and accountability. Um, we are seeing things like what, sh what, what Bob Ferguson is suing the Tacoma Detention Center for. Work for Center chips. For. Work yeah. for chips. Um, it's, it's absurd. You know, the detention system was never set up to be a long-term incarceration system. It is a civil center. It's where we hold people, for example, who are seeking asylum, refugee status. So our bill says stop having these be private for-profit detention centers. Phase it out over three years. And we are out of time, but you, uh, we want you to back, back to talk about health care for sure. And I will say that, you know, America's watching. We send you there to get stuff done. And I hope you guys can get past some of this partisanship because you have very important work to get done down there. Congresswoman, we, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Brandy. Yep.